Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So my name is Fabrice Dantec, and uh, as uh, we said, I, I work at Arkea, a French financial group. So uh, in advance, uh, excuse my French accent, of course, uh, if uh, there is some difficulties to hear me. Uh, so I manage a team of architects at Arkea, and we are, um, uh, we, our duty is to help the group to shift to open banking and API. And I also uh, created recently a team uh, for open banking, an open banking team, which uh, um, aims at uh, opening the bank through API. So some quick words about Arkea. Arkea is a French financial group, as I said, uh, mainly in France, but also in Belgium with Kitred, and uh, in Europe, uh, perhaps you know, uh, Mongope or Monext in, in the UK. Um, so we are lucky at Arkea because uh, our first sponsor about open banking is uh, Ronan Lemoyle, our CEO, and it helps a lot uh, when your CEO uh, pushes uh, in his strategy um, the concept of open banking so that uh, each time you have to, um, to group people together to talk about that subject, uh, everybody uh, follow. So yeah, it's a very helpful. Um, API is a product. Uh, I think you already heard this sentence. Uh, here I put a quote from the famous Mehdi Mejawi, um, who explains clearly what is uh, the sentence, uh, what is the meaning of this sentence, but I must confess that uh, um, it's really an unclear thing, an unclear concept uh, for most, most banks. And uh, I've been doing API for uh, more than 15 years now. So first in telecom, now in the banking industry. And uh, what I would like to share with you with in this talk is uh, my experience uh, doing API in banks, so uh, at Arkea, of course, but also based on the exchanges I had during the PSD2 project with a lot of uh, uh, other banks and, and fintechs and, and so on. So um, I was born in the early 70s, um, so there is no, uh, um, at, at this time, uh, my experience uh, at the bank was uh, behind a desk in a branch, and um, uh, each time I wanted to deposit or withdraw some money, uh, the advisor had to, to print a line on the, the, my bank paper book. So by the way, it is my real bank paper book of this, at this, of this time. So at this time, the, the model was pretty simple. Um, the customer uh, had to go to the branch and to deal with the advisor to access to the financial products. And on the bank side, uh, financial experts were providing financial products uh, to be delivered by experts in branches. So they were providing expert tools to, to their colleagues in, in, in branches. In the 80s and 90s, um, um, the remote banking emerged. So ATM, but also by phone, and uh, also through uh, video text. So in France, we had the Minitel, and I guess in the UK, you had Prestel. Um, in fact, the remote banking uh, allowed to the customer to gain in autonomy and to be able to access uh, financial products, but only for day-to-day -day acts and uh, for only basic functions uh, in autonomy. In 1993, uh, I went for the first time to the World Wide Web uh, at the university. And by the end of the 20th century, uh, the banks started to provide uh, new access through websites to uh, their customers. So at this time, the, 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 the bank website um, looked like more spreadsheet on the, on the web page than the real, real uh, website can, as we can uh, know it today. So um, in this situation, the bank had no two channels. The first one, um, still the branch, and the second one for an autonomy access for the customers. But the banks, uh, still used to provide financial um, products to the, to the customers first 
on the branch for their colleagues and the remote accesses were only seen as a mean to access the financial products. Then came a first disruption phase. It was at the beginning of the 21st century. Um, direct banks with a boom of inter internet uh, emerged and proposed a new way of uh, dealing with the, the, the finance. So they were web experts. They provide they provided a great uh, web uh, websites and, uh, and they had no branch. They were focused, and they're still focused, on the customer only and not on the financial products and they are really good at providing a great user experience. And finally, it is also what the customer bought at this time, the user experience on a website. So if we compare uh, at this time the, the, the traditional way of doing banking and the direct bank, uh, on the traditional side, we used to measure the financial products so to analyze whether uh, we have enough deposit and so on. And they, they were able to adapt the financial products so that they were able to provide uh, new uh, tools to their uh, colleagues in the branches. And optionally, they were delivering uh, basic functions to uh, the website or other kind of remote channels. On the direct bank side, uh, they consider the website as a product by itself. So they measure the use of the website and uh, uh, they have indicators about um, the performance of the website and so also they are able to analyze the customer journey to identify whether there is a discontinuation in the, the journey and they continuously adapt um, the website according to this feedback. Another difference between uh, traditional and direct banks at this time was a way of working. Because the website is at the core of the system, at the core of the business, uh, and because the website is highly technologic, they had to work together and to make the business and IT team work together. Uh, it was a real disruption uh, in opposition to uh, the way of working in traditional bank with waterfall projects and uh, separate teams, uh, uh, furthermore. So, um, in front of this situation, the traditional bank had to adapt if uh, uh, it wanted to uh, be able to compete. At Arkea, we succeeded uh, to move the focus to the customer. So what does it mean? It means that uh, you have to deal with the customer journey um, on the two first channel and to be able to ensure that he, he, the customer has um, a consistent journey, whatever is the channel, so that he is able, to, he is able to, to start the journey on one channel and to continue on another. And we divided, as, as for uh, several banks, we divided the teams in two layers, the product side uh, with uh, financial experts and the distribution side where we uh, acquired digital expertise to provide a real good experience to uh, the customer. We started creating an API layer to be able to ensure to have the same view uh, whatever is the channel for the customer. More recently, the bank uh, is leaving another disruption phase with fintechs and neobanks. So on the left side, you can see that uh, uh, a traditional bank manage the whole value chain. Uh, so they build their own financial products and they deliver them through their own application and website, whatever is the channel. And it is almost the same for the direct banks. For neobanks and fintechs, uh, by design, they go quick to the market and they are able to integrate uh, different kind of services and provide and they are able to, to, um, to build solutions from different pieces. Here, a neobank, for instance, builds its own checking accounts but prefer to, to avoid uh, to manage the, the, credit, the credit risk, for instance, and prefer to, uh, to use in white label loans provided by a traditional bank. 
the fintech here, the added value, the added value of the fintech is to analyze the data of the accounts and from this data uh, to be able to provide a great user experience to find a new way of saving money, for instance. And because they are good at providing this user experience, they can provide it for their own customers, but also in wide labels through API to other uh, actors. So this is an open banking model. Now you are not alone. You, have, uh, you are able to use services provided by others to go quicker to the market, to test new functionalities, to check whether it is uh, OK or not. And, uh, you're also able to find new cross drivers and to uh, provide your services to others uh, through APIs. A traditional bank uh, that wants today to address the distribution of uh, its product or services and data uh, through API has to face a third channel. So, uh, this time, it is not directly to the customer, but uh, the third channel addresses a new population, the developers, who work for partners and uh, who deliver uh, functionalities to customers. So, um, when the bank ha had, had to adapt uh, to the second channel, they had to acquire new skills. Uh, you have to understand that uh, uh, at the beginning, all staff in a bank were focused in delivering financial products only to their colleagues in a branch. So they had to acqu acquire um, new digital skills and introduce new concepts to deal with the second channel. Okay, they had the website, the application, mobile application now, and they had to master the user experience to be able to compete with others. They had to introduce digital marketing in front of uh, the traditional way of doing marketing. You have new kind of contracts, the terms of use, how the customer are allowed to use the website and the mobile applications. We introduced uh, new assistance uh, to uh, their, our customers for the digital tools. And you have to deal with different kind of risk, so hackers, phishing, external fraud, and so on. And we have to deal with new kind of authorization. Uh, we had to deal with authorization of, of our colleagues in the branch, now with the customers, what the customers is allowed to see and to do. With the third channel, we are leaving the same um, shift uh, because we have to adapt to a new kind of users and we have also this one to acquire new skills and to introduce new concepts. So of course, uh, the added value is to satisfy the, this new kind of user. So we are talking about dev developer experience. You heard a lot, of, a lot of about this. So what does it mean? It means that uh, the developer should find quickly um, how to use your API, test it, integrate it, and to have this wow effect while discovering the API on the developer portal. The developer portal is a showcase of the bank regarding APIs. So it is really important, it's not just about documentation. We also have to deal with new marketing. We have different kind of partners, we have customers, we have word label, we have fintechs, B2B2C and so on, and we will have to address them differently. Develop, developer relation for me is a kind of marketing. To be present in, in the places the developer are is a kind of marketing. You have to uh, make your brand known for the developers. And for the contracts, with this time we'll ha we will have to, to address the terms of use about API. In the banks, we often think that API is just a technical integration with a partner. So the shift is now to understand that it is a product which can be used um, to click, click and use uh, through, the web, through, through the developer portal. We also have to provide service level agreement. Uh, it's really new for the banks uh, that uh, were used to work for themselves. They have now to ha ensure stability performance in accordance to these uh, terms in the contract. 
The service desk is also new because we have to address uh, the assistance of developers about the use of API. And uh, regarding the risk, you will have to manage the split of responsibilities because now we are not responsible for the whole value chain and we, will, we can have the fraud on different pieces uh, of the value chain. And finally, uh, the authentication and authorization has to manage the partner connection, but also the, cons the customer consent consentment. So um, at Arkea, we had to shift to the search channel because we are convinced about uh, um, the importance of having a, an open bank and that we had to integrate our financial services inside the customer ecosystem. So um, we started from this point. We were providing API, but only for the two first channels. And uh, the API at this time were designed only to, pro to, to fit the, the, the screens we provided to advisors and to, to the customers. So the API we designed at this time weren't um, prepared and uh, uh, good enough to be provided to in a proper way for external developers. We were uh, on the approach of uh, UX and front design, so uh, our, our teams were focused on the screens, and uh, so we had to take uh, the, the head of the teams outside the screens. And from this design, we were able to develop a backend. From this backend, we created uh, open API specification, so we are REST. And, and from this uh, specification, we were able to build application for uh, the, the front, front applications. So actually it wasn't API, it was more a web service, a technical web service provided uh, especially for specific development. So we shifted to a complete, completely different state of mind and we uh, changed uh, to API design first. So it is a huge challenge in, into the bank because we have to really think outside the screen and to shift uh, every mind to uh, design the, um, the functionalities in the bank into resources and to design first the contract. So the contract is created. We are able to develop services behind the scene and hiding the architecture of, uh, of the, the, the system. And from this API, we're able to manage different kind of uh, authentication and authorization to access to the resources. Okay, so uh, furthermore, we made another um, um, uh, shortcut uh, at the first time for the first two channels. We were convinced that the API was a, 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 a subject only for the distribution teams. But uh, it was a mistake. We really think now that uh, all teams inside the company, so uh, the teams the, on the production side with financial expertise, has also to provide API to the whole company, but uh, designed to, to, be, uh, to be able to, to be delivered directly for external developers too. And on the distribu distribution side, we address only the authentication, the connection with partners, the, the rules, and different kind of aggre aggregation and customer journeys. So, um, to summarize what uh, uh, um, I said to you today, uh, so we had different steps in the, tra in the traditional bank. So we were first focused on delivering uh, financial products and focused on financial products for our colleagues into the branch. So there were no focus on the customer experience. So to address the second channel, we had to uh, master the user experience. So the banks, uh, uh, that succeeded in moving to the focus of the customer now are in the best-in-class banks and are able to manage the two first channels accordingly. To do that, it took time, more than 15 years to reach a high level. And um, um, it, it, was, it was a huge challenge and now we are facing the same challenge to address the third one. But this time we have to focus on customer but also on developer. 
And uh, because we have two kind of uh, customers, in fact, in, uh, uh, in, uh, this, uh, in distribution of the financial services. So the third channel is not ju just about publishing API. It, it's really about mastering the developer experience and to, to, to be able to have this, this wow effect with uh, this new kind of uh, customers. So one more time, we will have time, we had uh, a lot of work at Arkea at least, to uh, move the shift to API, open banking mindset, and to, to, to master um, the developer experience. Now for us, is the next step to provide a great user experience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fabrice. That was very uh, interesting, very insightful. Any questions? I have one. Oh, you have one? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, so, here, this screen. Uh, yes, so um, just a quick example. Um, for instance, so uh, we were designing APIs um, at the first time only in a technical uh, point of view to be integrated in a JavaScript application to be uh, easy. So we switched to REST. We were doing uh, other kind of uh, uh, technical uh, connection before. And uh, uh, the first, um, the first uh, way of working was to provide um, uh, only resources to be integrated into the applications. Uh, a quick example, for instance, we have a first screen to address and to see uh, the, uh, all the accounts I have, and another screen when I, I do a transfer to see the accounts I can use for uh, transfer um, as a debit uh, account. So we, I had a first set of resources and slash accounts for the first screen and another slash accounts for the second screen. So we were de dedicated resources to the screens. And we weren't, uh, um, bec why? Because behind that we have two systems, one managing the accounts, one managing the accounts uh, uh, um, available for transfer. And uh, we now have to hide this uh, complexity of our system. So we have one account resources, perhaps sub, sub, uh, sub resources behind the, the, the scene, but we have to hide that to the to the external developers. And uh, we, are, we have to, to, to avoid to, uh, to, to, to translate into our screens our, our own way to address the de delivery of our products. Is it clear? You're welcome.